Hi friends, I'm Maz Aftab from Easy Approach. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about Grid View widget in Flutter. Grid View widget is a scrollable widget that helps you display items in a grid layout. We know Flutter has list view widget that helps you display items in a list one next to another. However, grid view displays the item in 2D grid, something like raw and column fashion. So now let's implement the grid view in this example. But before implementing the grid view, let's see what code we have done so far. So there's nothing fancy in the code. We just have the parent widget and inside it we have material app and inside the home I have given home page widget that I have just created. It's just a simple stateless widget with a scaffold and in the body we just have an empty container. So let's create the grid view widget. For creating it we just uh, have to write grid view that is actually the name of the widget. And for defining items inside the grid view, we have a property name children. And inside it, you can give any number of items you want to show uh, in the grid. For now, I'm creating four different containers, each having different color so that we can identify them individually. Because uh, we will see some different possible ways of arranging these items inside the grid. That is why we are keeping it unique. So we can give any other color. This is it. And now if I try to run the application to see the output, it will show the error. Because there's one more property that we must define in grid view, and that is grid delegate. Grid delegate is the object that actually controls the arrangement of the items inside the grid. It actually specifies how many items uh, would be there in a single row or in a single column and all that stuff. So it actually manages the layout uh, of the of the items how the items are arranged actually inside the grid so as it is required we have to define the grid delegate so after the children or before the children we can specify the grid delegate and for its value we have two type of uh, grid delegate and we use one of them based on what we need in which the first one is called silver grid delegate with fix cross axis count it's so long and inside it we have a required property that we must define which is cross axis count and it can be any integer value for now i'm just giving three but i will tell you why i give here three now before understanding this whole thing uh, let's first understand what this cross axis for grid is with grid, there are two axes associated. The first one is called main axis and the other one is called cross axis. Main axis for grid is the axis where grid view is scrollable and the cross axis is perpendicular axis to the main axis. And for the grid view, the default scroll direction is vertical. That is why the main axis is the vertical axis and the cross axis is the horizontal axis of the grid. So now as we have understood the cross axis for grid, which is the horizontal axis in case of default grid, now we can understand this delegate more easily. Using this delegate, we can specify the maximum number of items in the cross axis of the grid, which is the horizontal axis, or you can say the row of the grid. Now say if I give here two, as cross axis count now it will show maximum two items in each row of the grid now let's run the application and you can see it is showing two items in each of the row of the grid because the row is actually the cross axis and we have specified the cross axis count as two 
that is why there is two items in each cross axis of the grid now there is one thing to observe that we didn't specify the height or width of any of the container inside the children yet it has some height and width here it is you can see in fact the aspect ratio of each of the container that is actually the ratio of width to height is one because each container has equal width and height so keep in mind whenever we are playing with the grid so each item inside the grid has the aspect ratio of one which is actually the default aspect ratio and you can change the aspect ratio of each of the item and how you can do it you can use delegate for this so inside the delegate we have child aspect ratio and now if i want to have the double width versus single height so what i can do i can give here two and if i refresh it you can see now the width is twice as the height and there are some more properties that you can have inside the delegate which is the cross axis spacing and the main axis spacing as i said the cross axis is the horizontal axis in case of default grid the vertical scrollable grid that we are have that we have right now so the cross axis spacing is the space between each element in in the cross axis in the horizontal axis so if i give her 16 there should be space in in between these two so let's refresh it you can see the there is uh, 16 pixels of a space in the in the cross axis between the elements between the items and similarly we can have the main axis spacing and if i give here 16 you can see now there is some space there's a space of 16 pixels in the main axis of the grid now the second grid delegate is let me comment this thing and let's define the second delegate so it is sliver grid delegate with max cross axis extent and inside it we have a property that we must need to define which is called max cross axis extent and in, and it it can be any double value so for now i'm just giving here 100 now before understanding this whole thing this whole delegate let me tell you what this cross axis extent mean by extent we mean size and by cross axis extent we mean size of each of the item in horizontal axis that is the width of each item in case of default grid view now this delegate take care of two things first it keeps the cross axis extent of each of the item that is the width of each of the item at most this value and it also keeps the width of each item equal now then we have four total items uh, in the grid and maximum width of each of the item should be 100 because we have specified here the max cross axis extent to 100 and the total available space uh, in a row in terms of pixels uh, which uh, I, will, I calculated before is 412 pixels it may be different in your device so now it's obvious with given parameters that these four containers uh, can come in the same row because uh, as we have defined here the max cross axis extent 200 so the width of all of these containers should be maximum 100 should be at most 100 and the second condition that this delegate needs to be needs to fulfill is that the containers each of the containers should have same width so because we have 412 pixels space in the raw and the maximum width should be 100 and they should be the width should be same so both of the condition uh gets fulfilled so all the containers can come in the same they can come in the same row so now let's run the application you can see all the containers is coming in the same row and now if we change this max cross axis extent to 150 so now we'll see what will happen so let's open the calculator 
to predict the output. So because we have specified here 150, so each of the size of the container should be at most 150. So it will be equals to 150 or it, it would be nearest to 150. So the easy solution is because we have total space of 412. So if we divide it with 150, so these number of uh, containers can come with equal widths in, in the same row. But as you see, 2.7 is no value. So let's try it with 2 first. If we divide uh, 412 into equal parts, so the width would be 206. But you can see here the main, the max cross axis accent is 150. And the value of each width should be at most 150. So, so it should be less than or equals to 150. So definitely uh, it will not show two elements, but it will show more than two. So let's try the three. So you can see now it it it's it will show three elements with each having this width and it's now fulfilling both of the condition because 137 all these containers three containers having the same width and it is also less than 150 and it's nearest to 150 so definitely it will show three elements in each row now So you can run the application and as we predicted, the output is same. And inside it, we have the same properties that we have uh, seen already in the first delegate that we discussed. So you can play with any, any of these properties. So I think this is it from this video. Uh, in this video, we have studied uh, about the grid view and about the grid delegates. And this is uh, the video I made after so long because I was preparing my studio and I was uh, really working on the quality of the videos. Uh, you can you can realize or you can sense that the video quality and the audio quality is much better than before. So this is it from this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll discuss uh, some new topic. So thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed the channel, please subscribe the channel and share the videos with those who want to learn Flutter with easy approach. Thank you for watching.